Today we're going to be talking to Dr. Eva Ramson, writer and science communicator, and to Shi Gang He, who is a professor at the School of Biomedical Engineering at Shanghai Jiao Tong University and is the vice president of the Chinese Neuroscience Society. Today we're going to be discussing openness to other ideas in science and technology. Here are a few perspectives on what might happen as you watch this video. It may challenge you, it might inspire you, it might even surprise you. So let's find out, shall we? Hi Eva, hi, hi. Shigang. Really, really happy that you could make it today. As you may know, openness is actually an essential dimension to our personal curiosity. Mm -hmm. And I was curious, what role do you think it plays in science and technology? Scientists always ask questions like why and how. So I think throughout the entire process, starting from you design a research project to uh, you uh, design your experiments, and when you complete your research, you write a paper and submit to a journal, at different stage, uh, you will involve discussion with other people and you want to hear the feedback from other people. So um, keep an open mind is uh, very important throughout the entire process. Conferences play a big role in the sharing of ideas as well because you're not just talking to your direct colleagues in your own group, you're going out there and meeting others. What potential would you say mixing different cultural fields has for science? I look a lot at the overlap between um, scientists and artists and how they work together. And one of the things that I noticed is that illustration has historically been such a big part of science. Like before we had um, all these expensive microscopes that could take photos, people were relying on hand-drawn images and scientists were actually trained in illustration. So um, yeah, these fields overlap a lot. Yeah, from my perspective, I kind of grew up in an Asian culture. And uh, traditionally, Asian people are very shy. They're not used to stand up, say something and ask questions. Now, with, uh, with, uh, with the globalization, uh, many people, young generation of scientists, more and more are being trained in the Western culture in America and in Europe. And uh, nowadays, our students are very active, actually. Uh, when you give a presentation, many, many people would stand up and ask questions. And generally, I feel somehow the Chinese students are actually more active than the Japanese students. <laughs> So they've, they've seen the benefit of it in, in Western countries and yeah. they brought it back. Yeah. What would you say is the hardest part of putting yourself in someone else's shoes? I think we all have our own um, ways that we think about the world and we kind of blindly assume that everyone else thinks in the same way. But that's not true. Yeah, and I think yeah. Yeah, remembering that, that's yeah. the hard part. Yeah. So. so I think the difficult part is try make yourself stand on their viewpoint and understand what their problems yeah. are. Now, one good way to slip in and out of different perspectives, I think, is actually through colours. I've gone and ordered a round of mocktails and each one represents a different colour. So if you pick one of your fancy, then you can give your own point of view on the topic of openness in science. Which one do you take a fancy to? Um, I like this one. Okay, so green is creativity, so can you take a creative spin on openness? Well, we were just talking about um, scientific illustration, how that's a collaboration between science and the art, so maybe we could think about how we can expand that into different fields of science and art and see where we get. What about you? Which one draws your attention? Well, I'll just take the closest to me. Ah, okay. So that is the black drink, because it's got the blackberry. Now, black is a dose of realism and pessimism. We've been speaking about uh, how openness has helped the development of scientific research. But uh, sometimes, if you're too open, then you're likely to get scooped. So you lose credit, and that probably will prevent people being very open. I think you're just not being creative enough now. Oh, I'm supposed <laughs> to be a pessimistic guy. <laughs> Well, I'm going to be the person to contest you, and I'm going to pick yellow, because I'm very much a half-full glass kind of person. Um, yellow is optimism. I would like to think that if people shared their scientific research, they would avoid people working on the same project twice, 
get to the same result a bit quicker, get more collaboration and get a more interdisciplinary view on what they're doing. So I'd like to think that working together you'd get a lot further. Yeah, but there are always bad guys, right? A few of them are going to do a lot of damage. There's, a, there's <laughs> always the bad egg, but you need to have good and happy people around. All right. Anyway, Let's I, try to be all optimistic. I say cheers. It was really interesting to see both of you see things from different points of view, which leads me on to my next question. Which has been your biggest change in perspective and where did it take you? Well, when I was a student in high school and in undergraduate, I was always invited to um, women in science programs or things that focused on girls and science. And I never liked these things because I felt that they were trying to say that I needed help and I didn't need help. So I would kind of pushed away from that. But in recent years, I realized that for other women, this, these groups have been really helpful and that me joining is actually helping them. So I thought about it in a different way. It's not for me, it's for other people. Yeah, for me, it's more like uh, from the culture side of things. So growing up in the Chinese culture and I did my PhD in Australia and then moved to a postdoc in the United States and uh, observing all these different countries and different cultures had a huge impact on my point of view to a lot of different things. And uh, it's actually changed me also personally, quite big changes. Have you ever found um, there was an occasion where perhaps being more open about something allowed you to achieve a less conventional result? I'm going to give you an example for a meeting I organized. I uh, served as the Secretary General for Chinese Neuroscience Society for eight years. And uh, the last meeting I organized, I decided to hold it in a very unconventional place. It's an ancient town, partly restored and partly reconstructed. And uh, it's a very nice place. I love it the first time I went there. So I managed to brought 3,000 people to the town. And uh, it's like a Venice, right, with uh, small canals and corridors. And uh, we put the post sessions in the corridors by the canal. And it was a, a huge success. Everybody loved it. So I think you know, being more open-minded, being a little bit creative um, in many aspects, um, scientific research as well as scientific communication, you probably will achieve a very, very nice effect. I can certainly imagine that such a change in scenery probably inspired the students in many ways. Now it's your turn to change your perspective. Click on the link to go to the Curious Elements programme and start training your curiosity and openness to other ideas today.